Snow introducing Arctic air to start the weekend. I've got a bigger snow system lurking to end the weekend. The forecast is on the way. A teen who pleaded guilty to killing a Lexington man in a park asked for probation today. The latest on the resentencing of Damian Sanders. And a Kentucky priest talks about his visit with the Pope, fresh off a trip to the Vatican. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting on this Friday. Some light snow back in the bluegrass today as we get ready to kick off a very harsh weekend of weather. Bitterly cold air and a possible winter storm will follow today's flakes. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. Yep, a little busy out there this weekend. And uh, really, we're just starting things out. Fairly calm now for most areas. That southern burst of snow right on cue this morning, covering roads into parts of southern Kentucky. Now we're tracking an Arctic front that is just to our north. And look at the bands of snow developing behind that front, getting a booster shot, if you will, from Lake Michigan. See that burst of snow across the Indianapolis area heading over toward Columbus. Well, that's going to drop its way from northwest to southeast quickly this evening, and we'll get that burst of snow into town late evening into the wee hours of the morning. That could coat some rooftops, cover a road or two. Not a ton of snow, generally a half inch or less into many areas. Defender radar network up close and personal showing a couple of snowflakes trying to develop in the skies across northeastern Kentucky. From there, we know it's bitter cold. We're going to focus on that Sunday into Monday storm system that blows out way. Definitely going to get some snow Sunday into Sunday night. We'll have a first call for that when I come back in a few minutes and we'll show you why Monday is still a little up in the air depending on where that low goes, guys. We'll track it all here in less than 15 minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Today, a man convicted in connection to a deadly shooting in Lexington was sentenced again, this time as an adult. Damian Sanders was 16 when police say he shot Antonio Franklin Jr. He pled guilty to second degree manslaughter and was sentenced to seven years. Kristen Kennedy was in court today when Sanders appeared before the judge again. It's our top story at 4 30. Damian Sanders and Anita Franklin met before sentencing. Franklin told us that Sanders apologized to her and expressed interest in wanting to help her talk with kids about violence. I want him to never forget what he did to Antonio Franklin. I want him to never forget that vision that. The other children that were in that park had to witness uh, when you make a bad decision. Franklin hopes Sanders will always remember the actions that led to her son's death. Back in 2014 in Duncan Park, investigators said Sanders fired the shot that hit and killed Franklin's son, Antonio. Antonio Franklin, police said, was an innocent man caught in crossfire. In all, officers charged four people with his death. Sanders was the first to plead guilty to a manslaughter charge. He was 16 at the time of the shooting. Now 18, Sanders went back before the court Friday to be sentenced as an adult. Judge Pamela Goodwine told him she would not probate his sentence. This court is not simply going to tolerate guns in the hands of our juveniles and simply give them a slap on the wrist, send them to juvenile detention facility, and when they become an adult, send them back into our community. That is not going to happen under my watch. Sanders will serve out the rest of his sentence with the Department of Corrections. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Three other men were sentenced for Franklin's death. Two served out their sentences already, and one of those two, William Dixon, is already back in jail. He's serving time for a possession of a handgun by a felon. A stomach ache helped a family escape an early morning house fire. The fire happened at a duplex on Township Square in Lawrenceburg. Firefighters say a child woke his mother up because he didn't feel well, and that's when they found out about the fire. The Red Cross is helping them find a place to stay. The Anderson News reports firefighters say an electrical shortage in the attic caused the fire. Lexington police nearly caught up with a gunman after an early morning robbery. The speedway on Versailles Road at Alexandria Drive was robbed just after 3 this morning. Police say an officer in the area saw the suspect run out of the store with a gun. The officer chased, toward Devon, chased him toward Devonport Drive before losing him. 
A federal judge denied a request to place Karen Cipher in a halfway house. In 2011, Cipher was sentenced to seven years and three months in federal prison for trying to extort money from U of L basketball coach Rick Patino. Cipher says a halfway house would allow her to improve her job skills and vocational opportunities. As it stands now, Cipher is scheduled to get out of prison July of next year. The fallout is still being felt as two Kentucky governors clash over health insurance. Yesterday, former Governor Steve Bashir announced an initiative to take on Governor Matt Bevin's proposed takedown of the state's insurance exchange, Connect. Today, Bashir's son spoke out against the administration's role in that debate over insurance law. Rebecca Smith has a look at the tug of war. Kentucky Governor Matt Bevin's new insurance commissioner dropped the state's legal defense of a consumer protection law intended to help life insurance beneficiaries. The Unclaimed Life Insurance Benefits Act requires insurance companies to make good faith efforts using public death records to determine if policyholders have died so their benefits can be paid. In looking at all the legalities of this, I mean, basically the appeals court has ruled that what was being required, which was a retroactive application of the law, violated the law. Attorney General Andy Bashir blames the Department of Insurance with dereliction of duty. Pretty much in the dark of night, the Department of Insurance under this new administration totally dropped the suit and the Supreme Court then dismissed it. I can't let that happen. Bashir spoke with Bill Bryant's Kentucky Newsmakers program this week. He addressed the current feud taking place between his father, former Governor Steve Bashir, and current Governor Matt Bevin. This is what both had to say yesterday about their feelings on Bevin's proposal to dismantle the state's exchange connect. You know, this is not about Bevin and Bashir. This is about Kentucky's families. This is about their desire to have affordable health care for the first time in their lives for most of them. And that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting to make sure that the vast progress that we made doesn't go away. My job is to clean up the mess that has been left for me. There have been years of problems in the making, a disregard for the funding of our pension plans, most preeminent among them. This decision arbitrarily, unilaterally, to expand Medicaid, bypassing the legislature, disregard completely for how to pay for it. As far as the attorney general's role in this. There may be a lot of legal hurdles for the administration. I'm sure that they are looking at those and they will be following those. Uh, my sole job is to make sure uh, that everyone follows the law. Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Governor Bevin's office had no comment on the dereliction of duty comment made by the attorney general. Kroger has just announced that it will make a heroin overdose antidote available without a prescription. Television station WKRC says the Cincinnati-based company says it will start making naloxone available on Monday. It's the latest company to do that. CVS announced a similar program earlier this year. Naloxone is carried by paramedics who regularly use it to revive overdose victims. Kroger has almost 2,800 supermarkets and multi-department stores in 35 states. Pope Francis made a brief stop in Cuba on his way to a six-day trip to Mexico. Adriana Diaz is in Juarez, Mexico with details on what the Pope is hoping to achieve. Pope Francis made a quick stop in Cuba on his way to Mexico. At the airport in Havana, he sat down with the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, the first such meeting in nearly a thousand years. The historic discussion comes as extremist attacks grow against all Christians. While in Mexico, the Pope will try to tackle challenges here, including drugs, violence, and poverty. His Pope mobiles are waiting for him in Mexico City, where they were blessed by a priest. Francis will be the first Pope to visit the border. And his last stop will be here, the city of Juarez, which borders El Paso, Texas. More than 200,000 people will come here to see the Pope celebrate Mass on this specially made altar. It was on his insistence that the, the site for the Mass be right close to the border. Uh, another site was offered to, to him that would have accommodated more people. Yes. American Bishop Oscar Cantu will travel with the Pope. His New Mexico diocese received tickets for the Juarez Mass. Has your phone been ringing off the hook with people looking for tickets? Oh my goodness, yes they have since uh, for the past three months. Juarez resident Rocio Ortiz hopes to see the Pope in person. What can the Pope's visit bring to this city? ¿Qué puede traer esta visita a Juárez? She says bueno, unity. Que Everyone is so excited to see him. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Juárez, Mexico. 
Tomorrow, the Pope will tour Mexico City during a busy first full day in the country. According to the Pew Research Center, roughly 85% of Mexicans identify themselves as Catholics. A Richmond priest fresh off a trip to meet Pope Francis has returned here to the bluegrass. Father Jim Sitchko was among 100 priests from the United States selected to be missionaries of mercy for this Jubilee year. The priests were invited to stay with the Pope in the Vatican City. We talked to Father Jim about the trip as he arrived at Bluegrass Airport late last night. He said it was surreal living alongside the church's Holy Father. Well, one of the things uh, he is uh, sharing with us, especially those of us called to be missionaries of mercy, is to extend the mercy of Christ to all people and to recognize that, you know, um, we're not called to judge individuals, but we're called to show Christ's love and healing and mercy and, and care to those. Before returning, Father Jim said the Pope was kind enough to take a selfie with him. And there you see it. Yeah, All right, stick with us. Chris is going to be up next with a check of your forecast. All right, it is the weekend, but yeah. it is going to be a really cold weekend at that. At least we know it's coming. Yep. When we can get ready, Chris, you have prepared us as best you can. That's all I can do. Now it's all in your hands, all right? <laughs> <laughs> we are starting the weekend, though, with a little burst of snow heading into northern Kentucky. Hey, uh, not too bad of a sky right now, Lexington. 31 degrees, feels like 21 with winds that are gusting up and a big drop in temperatures coming up as we go through the next little bit. Defender Radar Network is picking up on a little bit of light snow action. That'll zip into town later tonight. We'll track that when I come back here in just a few minutes. Right now, let's get a check on traffic. Here is Officer Don. Live look at Lexington traffic flow in real time. Looks like our slow areas are because of a couple of collisions the police are working right now. Uh, what is it made in Woodland? No one's heard of that wreck, but it is blocking part of the intersection. Uh, another one is the Newtown and Citation. That's a non entry crash, too, but could see impacts on the town pipes of the circle to the interstate. Drive times, we're okay right now, headed to Paris. No major delays toward Winchester on 64 and over to Richmond. Claysbury Bridge moving fine. Now back to the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A special setting for a music video and a house in the holiday spirit. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. Eh, you may not want to try this the next time you're aboard an, a flight. The band OK Go just released a new music video shot aboard a plane in zero gravity. The conditions were so challenging that at one point the lead singer briefly blacked out on camera. So for three weeks, they practiced and performed as the plane would climb until it goes over the hump, creating 27 seconds of weightlessness. The band members and production crew threw up 58 times while recording this unique video. And I actually did the vomit comment years ago with a story, and I also got sick. Okay. So I know, I know where they're coming from. I didn't do that paint thing, though. Yeah. How about we talk about Valentine's? Sure, um, right yard ahead. decorating is usually something you do for Christmas or Halloween, but a family in Virginia goes all out for Valentine's Day. Stephanie Loving says the idea of Valentine decorations began when she was little. She says she used to set out brown bags, one with Valentine's and the other empty. Loving says children in the neighborhood soon caught on and they began swapping Valentine's that way. In order to take a Valentine, all they had to do was leave one of their own. Now, as an adult, Loving fills her yard with several love inspired decorations. Decorations complete with four foot hearts, pink lights, and a kissing booth. Loving says her yard attracts people from all over her community. I love it. We need a little bit more kindness and spreading some love. So I love that. I agree. Happy Valentine's Absolutely. ahead of time to all of you all out there and stay with us. WKYT at five is next.